It is day one of the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games, and we are on our way to crowning the fittest man and woman on earth. Welcome to the Road to the Ranch. Now, coming up here, we have a great show full of live coverage for you. We're going to start with the community spotlight, a great story from one of our members overseas in Europe. We've got affiliates around the world who are taking part in the CrossFit Games, and Annie Thor's daughter is coming on to tell us a little bit about her experience so far in 2020. Plus, you can check out some interviews that we did yesterday with both Dave Castro and Jacob Hepner. Now, live analysis and scores from events one and two are coming up shortly. But first, we have some incredible stories from within our community that we want to share with you. First up, we all know how important it is in CrossFit to be strong, not just physically, but also mentally. If you're a little bit newer to the sport, you may not realize just how important that is. For some people, it makes all the difference. And for Bethany Robinson, it saved her life. Check this out. When I was a kid, I was really sporty. I think me and my sister actually made up the athletics team, just me and her at one point. I was quite big in comparison to everybody else. When I was 13, I was five foot nine, same height as I am now, and around 12 stone. I started struggling with body dysmorphia from about that age. Her self-esteem was just consistently being knocked by the fact that she felt uncomfortable and felt quite self-conscious. My eating habits were great when I was growing up. When I moved out and went to uni, I started eating the same quantities, but of pasta. <laughs> I already had this perception of my body that I was big anyway, so I was just like, well, I'm fat anyway, so what's a bit more fat? I got into a relationship with a guy who was really emotionally abusive and then later got physically abusive. I think that was the trigger for my mental health to really start decreasing. All of my suicide attempts have always been very sort of violent. You're not thinking about your family, you just want the pain to stop. When I was diagnosed in 2016, they tried me on a load of medications. It was in existence, but I wasn't happy. I was just like, is there anything that I can change in my life that might help this? And they were like, well, you could try lifestyle changes. Sleep for like seven to nine hours a day, eat well, eat enough vegetables, try and avoid alcohol, and then they were like, exercise. Ellie encouraged Beth to get into CrossFit and in doing that they became closer again as sisters. I just loved it. We started like three times a week and then before I knew it we were up to five times a week. She talks about it as her CrossFit family and that was exactly it. It was a really positive, wonderful environment to be in. There's just such a positive community in CrossFit around women being strong. I found belief in my body. It's so empowering to like realize you can pick up your body weight for multiple repetitions. She's back to actually the way she was when she was a little girl. She's got that sort of joy about her again. It's having the tools and the knowledge to know what helps me get back to stability. And for me, that's been CrossFit, nutrition and sleeping well. And I am actually live on with Bethany right now. Bethany, how is it going? Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Bethany. It was really emotional and it was very personal. I think it's just so important to tell these stories because if there's somebody out there that's like me that is where I was, it's important to say that there is hope and that you can find that recovery through things like CrossFit. Because for me, like CrossFit is my medicine and I just want to get that out there to as many people as possible. And it got me to where I am today, where I'm much fitter than I was and better mentally and physically. And I want that yeah. to other people. Yeah, that's great. I know that, you know, we all have good days and bad days. And sometimes it feels like two steps forward, one step back. Even though you've come so far, what do you have to tell yourself on days that may not feel as great? On the days where I feel bad, I just try and go back to the gym. Like that is yeah. what makes me feel better. And my coach is really good as well. He knows that. Um, and he can always see it in my eyes when I'm having a bit of a wobble and he'll just encourage me even more. Um, I just know that if I pick myself up and just make it to the door, that it's such a welcoming environment that will help me to just feel better and get on that road to my mood stabilizing again, which is why I do it. So. Man, that is the power of a good coach and the power of an, an awesome community. 
if you're if you're new into CrossFit, uh, you might not know that. You might not you know get that vibe necessarily. You might think, oh, I'm just not strong enough yet or fit enough yet. Well, what would you just say to say to someone who might be nervous or intimidated about stepping into a box for the first time? Well, when I first walked into the gym, I was 18 stone and in this were like, I think it's over 100 kilos. So I was big, I was morbidly obese, and you've just got to get to that door. And it's just mm-hmm. such a welcoming community. The coaches just help you through it. And I, I even say to people, if they're nervous, then just message the CrossFit gym and see if they yeah. can give you some like ideas on how to make it, how to get past that initial anxiety. But you've just got to go for it at the end of the day because it could end up changing your life. And I think that's really important. That is the best advice. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your story with the with the greater community here. No worries. Thank you for having me. I will see you later. Bye. Well, 2020 may have been a little bit of a weird year so far, to say the least, and that's definitely what brought us to this different sort of phase one online competition that we see here for the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games. But the cool thing about that is it's giving affiliates around the world a chance to participate alongside their favorite elite athletes. Check this out. 21 thrusters, 21 chest of our pull-ups, keeping it moving. Friendly Fran here at the Swamp, 5 a.m. Let's get it. I am Bruno. We are CrossFit Villama Squad doing the next Nancy. Hi, we're CrossFit Sapphire from Vega, New South Wales, Australia, and our kids are about to do some of the games workouts. We're going to practice handstands and roller. What do you reckon, kids? Yeah! yeah. Go, Tia! Go, Sarah! Well, today is not only a special day because it is the start of the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games, it's also a special day because it's the birthday of one of our favorite all-time CrossFitters, Annie Thor's daughter, and we are so excited to welcome her live here on the show as well. Ah, uh, okay, so we are going to wait on that Annie interview for just a minute. Technology, am I right? It's the Zoom life. Instead, let's catch up with Director of Sport Dave Castro. Now, Dave and I had a chance to sit down yesterday and talk about all sorts of different aspects of the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games. Take a listen to how the games that we landed on today were not necessarily always in the cards. It's amazing that we're here. It's amazing that we're talking about the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games, given just the difficulties of the year and how I'm sure it was insane for you to plan and, and everything going into it. Tell me a little bit about this new format that you had to land on, I'm sure, to you know make things work with the world, but also to make things work for the athletes. Well, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, and at the beginning of the year, we were planning an event for Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> and like we were way deep in the process, and I, I thought we had a great programming, uh, a programmed event for Madison. There were still some holes, but it was really exciting. There's gonna be some neat things that uh, I was anchoring off of for that event. Then, you know, around March, I think it was March timeframe, you know, all the pandemic stuff happened. Yeah. And so there at that, so why I'm saying this is because there's been so many different stages we've gone through to even get here. So first was Madison was happening, then the pandemic happened and all of uh, these sporting events to, to cite specifically the Olympics got canceled. And so, you know, oftentimes I don't like the comparisons, but it happens a lot where people kind of compare us to, to the Olympics. And some people uh, take lead off of what the Olympics do and think we should follow suit, which I always believe we need to um, forge our own path ahead. But so that when the Olympics canceled, there was a lot of pressure um, even internally or in our community to cancel our games too. And I think even at a certain point, I was like, yeah, this is it. We're not gonna do the games. Um, so, so in my mind, there was this point early on in that that's like, okay, maybe we should cancel the games. Mm-hmm. We hadn't officially at, at this step yet. I talked to Bill from Rogue about it and he kind of, to put it lightly, got my head out of my ass and just like, he didn't say anything aggressive or, or he, he just kind of advised and 
suggested, hey, you guys should really try to pull this off. Mm -hmm. and, uh, even, and he said, even if you did something small and an aromas. And I was like, hey, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> and uh, I really liked how he just kind of reframed my thinking. And, and even for myself, I was like, yeah, we're not going to give up. We're not going to quit. We're not going to quit on ourselves. We're not going to quit on the community. And so I was like, yeah, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's make an event happen this year. It's been cool kind of going through, but it is, it is nice to get it started, even though it's a little late compared to when we normally do. Yeah. And it's interesting that it's going to end in October, like our, our in-person event. So this whole season, because of all of this, has been strung out. But I'm happy that we're doing it, especially seeing so many other sports at this point. Right. Their sports are happening. Yeah. And more are opening up. So I would feel embarrassed or like we dropped the ball if we didn't do something this year. And, and I'm, I'm happy we're doing something, even if it's this. Yeah. And it's not even if it's this. This isn't a great thing to be pulling off. And it is the CrossFit Games. Yeah. I've heard people say like, hey, is there going to be an asterisk next to this one? I'm like, no, absolutely not. The people who win this will be the fittest alive. And uh, it'll be a great process and a great test to get them here. I think from a fan perspective, I'm just, I'm excited to watch. I'm excited to watch my favorite athletes throw down despite the craziness of the world. And I think, I think the community at large is, is grateful to the, you know, you guys not, not giving up. Yeah. Like, many chances to do so. And well, even in the past couple of days, just all the hype we've done with the announcements uh -huh. and just like teasing it out there. It's been really cool. It's been neat to see the enthusiasm from the community and people excited, even about this online format. Yeah. And there's, there's just a desire for for us to move forward, for the competition to happen, for us to all get through this and cheer on, you know, our CrossFit heroes, totally, essentially. Totally. The hype has felt very familiar. It's like the CrossFit Games yes. and the excitement that I know and love from years past. Yes. Now, Dave Castro and I had a chance to catch up on several different topics yesterday, so you're going to see a few more clips from our conversation coming up later on in the show and in shows throughout the rest of the weekend. Now, before the athletes had a chance to take on events one and two, we had the chance to catch up with none other than Jacob Hepner on what his training looked like so far in 2020 and how he's been getting his butt kicked by a teenager. Oh, welcome to the show, Jacob Hepner. I'm so excited to be talking to you from a distance. It's not quite the same when I don't have a mic in my hand that you can steal from me. Yeah, yeah, so I can't, I can only talk over you now. So that, that's, I'm limited by what I can do. You are welcome to, I feel like we're all experts at that now since Zoom is all we know, but it is still awesome to catch up with you. Um, you know, we're barreling toward the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games, which is so amazing considering everything that's been going on in the world. And I just, I wanna hear sort of like your outlook, your perspective on this year's competition, given your experience as a competitor, and especially given your very impressive sixth place finish last season. Yeah, I think I'm um, like, uh, you gotta see the, the positive in things. I think like there's been a lot, like tw let's be real with ourselves. The joke is like 2020 is like a mullet, right? It's been like all work in the front and part, hopefully it's party in the back, right? Hopefully. So 2020 has been kind of you know a rough year for a lot of people. And I'm just honestly thankful we can even have the games. Now I realize it's not the games, right? It's not like you and I are standing next to each other talking after an event, and I'm not hugging sweaty Noah Olson, um, which is a which is a if shame. only, if only, if only. <laughs> um, but you know, given the circumstances, I think it's still pretty cool that we can still show up, compete, uh, even even albeit via virtually. I think it's a still a good opportunity to compete with other guys still have the same price purse, still yep. be able to shout out to sponsors, still get to do things like this. And so overall, I think it's a, it's a, it's the best you can possibly do given the circumstances around us. Well, I want to talk a little bit about your training leading up to the games, because I, I, you know, we know that you are the master of volume and it's always so impressive watching you program for yourself, train, train alongside the other folks you have at your gym. And I think it's particularly interesting that you train alongside Olivia Kerstetter who's a teenage athlete. Tell me a little bit about how that started and how that continues to like motivate you. So Olivia trains with me um, when she was on COVID schedule. So she wasn't going to school. Right. Uh, she was training pretty much like two or three times a day with me. She hated me. Oh, I, always no. felt, I always felt bad for the girls because it's like, hey, what'd you guys do this summer? What'd you guys go do? And they're like, oh, I hung out with Jacob like three times a day. For a <laughs> it sounds like a might... dream for most of us, but for a 14-year-old girl, <laughs> yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. No, so, so yes. it's impressive to me to see all these young kids coming up in a sport where, you know, like 
what I've done in the sport will cease to exist and really matter at some point when these kids are going to blow it out of the water. So it's cool to be involved in that and and to teach them things and show them, hey, these are the mistakes I've made in the Uh five years I've done CrossFit. And so let's make sure you fix them now. Outside of the world of competition. I mean, there's a lot going on. And I I think that you are one of the elite athletes that's doing kind of the best job at having activities and being known for things outside of just – your performance on the competition floor and i think a really good example of that is your youtube channel and your youtube show jacob of all trades which i know is powered by fit aid what kind of got you into that and tell us a little bit about kind of why you test out doing the things that you do on that show well, what i pitched them was what if we did something out of the box something different that no one's done before what if we stepped out and decided you know what we can do photos and that's great. But what if we do a show that people would enjoy watching? Um, and it's not necessarily like me pitching fit aid over and over again and making you feel like it's a infomercial, but we'll just have a good time, have a positive family friendly show, have a good laugh. And then, Hey, it's sponsored by fit aid. So that's a cool connection. I love it. If you guys want to catch up with Jacob on his show, Jacob of all trades, uh, powered by fit aid, you can check it out on YouTube. Jacob, you've got some competing to do. Best of luck with everything going on in the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games. And thanks so much for catching up with us. Yeah, thanks so much. Appreciate it, Biggie. Now, we are just a few minutes away from actually finding out how Jacob and the rest of the athletes have done so far in events one and two. Make sure to stick around because those live results are coming. But before we get there, let's talk a little bit about what we may be able to expect to see today. We have Annie Sakamoto with us, who not only is an excellent analyst, but also a longtime CrossFit competitor and has a little bit of games experience under her belt as well. I mean, a little bit, right, Annie? At least a little. Just a little bit. Um, I, I'm so excited to bring everything with you, to, uh, with Sean today, all of the results. Uh, they're coming in and we're trying to read these real time. So uh, just a couple minutes and we'll get to share with you all the results. I'm so excited to, to see how it all goes. Now, we talked to Jacob yesterday. I mean, he seemed really excited about all of the events coming down the pipeline. Didn't necessarily say that anything would be um, not up his alley, but of course he's Jacob of all trades, so I guess that makes a lot of sense. Um, what do you expect out of his performance coming up? Well, I mean, the CrossFit Games are notorious for the uh, the unknown and the unexpected, right? So to think uh, that we have all these athletes that we, we think we know how they're going to do, and then you just never know. There's these, even with benchmark workouts, classic CrossFit workouts, I feel like we're gonna see some, some upsets, um, some things we didn't expect out of some of these athletes. Yeah, that's a good point. You never really can be prepared, especially on competition day, and especially given the weirdness of 2020. I mean, this is the first time we're seeing a phase one that's online. You have a ton of experience competing on every level. What's your take on this kind of like new format that we have? I just think again that this year is the year of adapting and getting creative Um, and anybody that has thought outside of the box, I applaud them and CrossFit did just that. Thank you so much, Annie, for your perspective. Excited to catch up with you later, but for now, let us head over to Sean Woodland who has some live results coming up for us. Thank you, Nikki. It's going to be a uh, pretty exciting next 30 minutes because as you heard Annie say, the results are still coming in. Uh, we're going to bring those all to you coming up. We're going to have some highlights from the opening uh, two events, uh, some familiar faces, some familiar names, putting up some big scores and some big surprises coming up as well as some big names are going to have to make a comeback. It's coming up next on the road to the ranch. It's always good to return to your roots. The CrossFit Games began here, a dusty ranch in Aromas, California. A backyard barbecue became a worldwide sport. That sport needed bigger stages, Carson, California, and Madison, Wisconsin. This year, a global pandemic has made gathering on those stages impossible. So we go back to our gyms, and we go back to our roots, the ranch in Aromas, California. Athletes will toil in isolation for a chance to compete in person. While the venues have changed and the format is different, the goal is still the same. Find the fittest on earth. The road to the ranch starts now.
Hi, everybody, and welcome to Aromas, California. The road to the ranch continues as we are joined by Annie Sakamoto. Nikki Brazier is here as well, and we're just going to bounce all over the place and show you who's here because there's a lot of stuff going on. And it's, uh, it was an exciting day. I mean, I, I, every time we have an online format like this, we know that there are going to be some things that go as expected. Yep. And there are going to be some surprises. Yep. But there were some huge surprises here yep. after the first two events. <laughs> yep. And again, you know, we, we're getting all these results kind of real time. And so we're juggling our expectations, what we thought would happen, and these moments of like, oh my gosh. Yeah. This person's in trouble right yeah. now. Yeah. We will, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see any events live, but we are going to bring you highlights. All the results are in now for events one and two. We're going to start with the women. Let's take a look at event number one. And here is one of the things that went as expected. Tia Toomey wins event one for the women. She goes out and puts up a time of three minutes, 40 seconds. And look who's right behind her. Cara Saunders, just nine seconds between her and Tia Toomey. So that battle is officially on. Then you have a host of American athletes led by Brooke Wells. But look how close it is. Three through 10 separated by just 20 seconds. Some names you don't see there. Sarah Sigmund's daughter, she finished in 23rd for this event. And, uh, or 27th, make that. Yeah. Captain Davis' daughter was 12th and Sam Briggs was 14th. Let's go over to event number two, the one rep max front squat. Guess who? Tia Toomey <laughs> wins again. Two for two for Tia Toomey, 313 pounds. Laura Clifton and then Cara Saunders. Talked about it yesterday, that mom strength. Danny Spiegel, great event for her, 293. And then Laura Horvath uh, rounded out the top 10 as she ties with Karen Freopa with a lift of 275 pounds. So let's start with how this all kind of went down chronologically. We started in Australia, that, yep. seemed, that was a while ago. Cara Saunders, one of the first athletes to go. You thought she would do well in event one, and she put up a big score early at 349. 349, that is just smoking fast. If you look at it, uh, both her and Tia were about 39 to 45 seconds faster than the third place finisher, Brooke Wells. Um, Again, this workout, this event lent itself to Kara. She's got strong legs, she's got short limbs, uh, but to think that she was sub four minutes on this event. And then of course, she's always been one of the strongest top end females in the sport, but three, excuse me, yeah, uh, 294 pounds. So near 300 pounds, less than a year yeah, after having a baby. Just insane. So she was one of the first athletes to go. Then uh, we move west. We go to Europe, and Laurel Horvath yep. was next. And we knew these first two events with that uh, damn Diane looming. She had to get off to a good start. Didn't get off to the start she wanted to, but she was able to sort of right the ship a little bit there in event two. Definitely, yeah. Laura finished uh, the, the friendly Fran in 547, which unfortunately for her was only good for 24th place. She did what she needed to do though on that one rep max front squat. She pulled, two, uh, she pushed, I should say, more than pulled 275 pounds, which was good for 11th place. That'll definitely dig her out of that little hole she created for herself on Fran. But is that enough to keep her, you know, above the line that she needs to be in going into Dan Diane? And we talked about surprises, and, and I'm not surprised by this one. I'm, I'm shocked by the fact that Sarah Sigmund's daughter, after two events, is in 26th place. These were not the two events I thought she would have a problem with. I'm, I'm so bummed right now, Sean. We really teed her up to have this fantastic weekend. and. You know, I didn't think either of these events would cause her any issues. I would not have put my money that either, you know, thrusters and chest to bar pull ups would have had her in 27th place. Uh, and then to think that she couldn't bring it back with the squat, she only squatted 255, which was good for 18th place. That's not where Sarah needs to be if she's going to try to make it back here to the ranch in October. While Sarah, where she is right now, is shocking. The one thing that did go as expected, Tia Toomey, two for two on day number one. I mean, it's this is getting ridiculous because it's, you know, no one is even challenging her right now. This is very Fraser-esque, if I yeah. may say that, right? I mean, she is just so above and beyond the rest of the competition here. To think that she was 340 and then shortly thereafter was able to squat over 300 pounds. She's not a huge athlete. Uh, uh, you know, we're not talking about those 
gorgeous Danny Spiegel thighs <laughs> squatting that weight. We're talking about Tia Tumi who weighs about 130 pounds. Um, so no shock that she did so great on the Friendly Fran event, but to think that she also out squatted all of those ladies by 10 pounds is incredible. And we were sitting here breaking down the Friendly Fran result, and when you, you talk about the number of movements and the number of seconds, I mean, she was moving one rep about every minute or a second and a half, and that does not take into account the time to walk to and from the bar to the barbell. And I think it's important to note because that transition time is very important mm -hmm. as well. And, and CrossFit has set up a very specific distance that both the barbell needs to be from the rig. Um, so it's not like she made her transitions quicker or the distance shorter. There's a very set space that these athletes are, are doing these events in. And so it just means... She just went that much she faster. She was cooking. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about really fast the other two of the other athletes in the top five: uh, Christine Best and Christy O'Connell. Good start for them. Uh, expected O'Connell to do well, but not, we don't know a whole lot about Christine Best. But she made the most of those first two events. Rookie CrossFit Games. She gets a fourth on Friendly Fan, Fran and a seventh on the front squat. So two top ten finishes. Definitely good enough to have her in the top five right mm -hmm. now. Fantastic performance for her first games appearance. And then. Christy uh, Aramo yeah. O'Connell, not surprising that she got sixth in the friendly Fran, but get this, Sean, she front squatted 281 wow. pounds. She's similar size to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky if I could deadlift that kind of weight <laughs> at this point, right? And she was able to pull that. So super impressive performance for her. I don't see her having any trouble coming up on the damn Diane. Yeah, so she's looking good. She sits well. But but I really have to mention Cara Saunders at right. this point. Um, you know, I think it's really easy for a lot of people to think, oh, she had a baby. It was good to see her, right? To come back with that mom strength, that ma goodness <laughs> that she's coming back with. It's just, it's really fun to see her doing so well so early yeah, on. And the last time that we saw Cara Saunders at the CrossFit Games, it was 2018. And as Annie mentioned, she took a year off to start a family. She is back with a vengeance this year. And she's learning how to balance being a competitor and a mother. And it looks like she's found out how to do that very well. I feel good. I feel really different than any other competition that I've done before. Obviously, a huge factor in that the world is really different. The lead up is different. The prep, everything is so different. And then I've also had a child along for the ride, which is really rewarding and gives back so much more in the way of like your why. Uh, and then also really, really tricky because coordinating the logistics of a small human is just a nightmare um, when you're trying to like you know show up every day and put yourself in the line do this massive physical task and on someone else's watch most of the time um, but I feel good I feel I have been able to get a lot of things back to where I was pre-baby um, even given the difficulties and obviously I have a, a there's, you know just like the experience of being like highs and lows there's like things that are like way more awesome now that I'm like really stoked about and really ready and good and then you know every day just stressing like that she's not going to have enough food or something while I'm competing or need to sleep so <laughs> that's about how I feel stressed about my child but excited about competing <laughs> And maybe a little bit of recency bias here. We forget how good of an athlete you know, that Cara Saunders is. I mean, she's been a fixture at the CrossFit Games. You think back a couple of years ago, that close finish she had uh, with Tia Toomey, almost being crowned the, the fittest woman on earth. I mean, she's back with a vengeance here. Totally. And I was telling you yesterday, I remember sitting on the bus in 2012, riding to Pendleton uh, with Cara Saunders, and she was a rookie athlete mm -hmm. that year. And to think that you know, she never stopped. She kept going. She stopped briefly to have a family. Um, and, and like I said, I felt even better after having my first kid. Uh, so I think, you know, this could be a great year for Cara. Yeah, well, let's take a look now at the men's competition. We're still tabulating results for the uh, front squat, but we do have all the results officially now for uh, Friendly Fran. And like the women's side, there's look, no shock at who's at the top here. And it's Matt Fraser with a blistering time of three minutes, eight seconds. Noah Olson, the closest man to him, and he was 47 seconds back. Baden Brown, that time holds to put him in the top five. He is in third, followed by Scott Tetlow. Good result for Jacob Hepner. 
And then it's Bjorn Carl Gumitsen and Yonikowski rounding out uh, the top 10. And there are a couple uh, names, big names, that you don't see inside uh, the top 10. So right off the bat here, it was Baden Brown, like Carl Saunders, uh, who went first. And man, you know, we don't know a whole lot about this kid. But right. It, he's looking legit now here, after these two events. Here's what we do know. He had one event last year at the CrossFit Games and then was out. Mm. To think that he started off with a sub four friendly Fran, which was good for a third place tie, is fantastic for this athlete. And then, uh, you know, to, again, to think that he's going first, not that any of the other athletes get in advantage by knowing what the other ones have done, but I would imagine that there is a, you know, there's a little pressure yeah. being some of those first ones that go. 422 on his front squat. Again, it, it should be in the top 10, I'm going to imagine, as far as finishes go. So really great start for Baden Brown. Yeah, Baden, Baden Brown ties for third in event one, a sixth place in event two. So definitely looking like he's going to be inside the top five in the overall standings once we have those. Then we move again to Europe, where a guy we thought would be inside the top five, old Mr. Consistency, you know, nothing flashy, Bjorg from Carl Gumanson. Not really the start I think that he was looking for. Not bad, but I don't think where we expected him. Right. I mean, I would say this is BKG doing BKG <laughs> things. Nothing flashy, nothing exciting. Um, tenth place on the friendly Fran. Uh, he squatted uh, 406, which I think should keep him in the top 15. So, you know, again, he, he's not no top 10 finishes or under 10, but I, it should be good enough, even looking at the events that are coming, to keep him in a decent position yeah. going forward. Right now, Bjorg and Carl Gumitsen uh, tied for 10th in event one, and then 13th, this is unofficial, 13th in event number two. So if that holds, like you said, not bad for him. He should be inside the top 10. Well, then you go to uh, old Matty Fraser, and <laughs> old. I mean, old Matty yeah, old Matty Fraser <laughs> just doing what he does. You know, 308. 308. I mean, there, we were saying there are people who would love to have that as a regular Fran time. Oh, they would. They would crawl outside of their skin to have that <laughs> as a regular Fran time, right? And to think that again, he did. I think we counted it up as 126 repetitions in 188 seconds. That's that's where we mm -hmm. were saying that's about a second and a half per repetition, not counting transitions. So impressive and just actually hard to wrap your head around. Yeah, then he goes out and he front squats 425 pounds. Right now, that's good enough for fourth place. So Fraser looking like he's going to be your overall leader after the first two events. We will have video of those events up here a little bit later. Now let's move on to the guy we talked about yesterday. Just has to avoid that mistake. Just can't put himself in an early hole. That's Pat Vellner. Pat Vellner is in an early hole. Yeah, he really is. We talked about how often he finds himself in 35th place. Well, out of, you know, 30 competitors, he got 16th in friendly Fran with a 420. And it's just not the start we would expect to see from somebody who won Wadapalooza this year, who won the Rogue Invitational. Um, and then he moves on to event two. He squats 383 pounds, which right now is looking like it's only going to be good enough for about 21st place. So Pat's got a little hole to dig himself out of going into event three. Yeah, we, one guy we didn't talk about here, we, we said Matt Fraser finished right now fourth in the front squad event. The winning lift for that event, 490 pounds by Griffin Raleigh. I mean, you near I can't even imagine jumps. unracking that weight and what that must feel like on your body. 490 and he wins the event. We were saying, I can't even imagine pushing that weight oh. across the floor. And get this, Sean, he got ninth on event one. So top 10 on that one, goes out and squats almost 500 pounds. Griffin Raleigh's looking pretty good right about now. Yeah, Raleigh, if that holds, Third place overall, unofficially, after two events. And then another youngster, Justin Medeiros, we just got his result in uh, for the front squat. 437, that would be good enough for third. So that would put Medeiros in fourth. So this is going to be fun now, watching this head into the final uh, five events here. Exactly. And again, you know, and Dave spoke to it yesterday. You can have a poor event. you got to brush it off. Uh, you you got to move on to the next event. But you know, what these athletes are doing, which I think is really tough, we were also talking about this, every time they do an event, they have no idea if what they did was good, bad, or otherwise, because they're not 
these are, they're now seeing the event results. So unless they're talking to each other, they have no way to measure mm -hmm. how good they did or not well. Yeah. So, you know, I think a lot of them now will be scrambling. Some may even get a little too comfortable. It'll be very interesting to see how these next yeah. five events play out. Yeah, definitely cannot put, take your foot off of the gas no. here. Uh, Let's uh, go into now what is on tap next. So we have two more events in this uh, upcoming window. We have, uh, starting with event three, we have that Dam Diane. And I think this is going to be a chance for some other people who didn't do too well in these first two events, uh, maybe didn't, those first two didn't play well with their strengths, possibly this could change things. And it, and it could change things for the better, mm -hmm. but it could also change things for the worse because let's not you know, overlook the, the notion or the idea, the fact, I should say, that Strict handstand push-ups, when they're gone, they're gone. Mm -hmm. It's not like, uh, you know, you catch your breath and you go back over and you pick it up again. When, when you've tapped out on a handstand push-up, especially strict, you kind of just have to sit there and wait yeah. and you're eating at that clock. So uh, I'm really interested to see how this plays out for some of our athletes. Yeah, let's start on the women's side where I'm sure you're looking at athletes who have some gymnastics background. Uh, who do you think does well here on Damn Diane? I've got to go with Kari Pierce yeah, on this good, one. Yeah, surprise, one. surprise, right? She was third worldwide in 20.3, which is deadlifts, handstand push-ups, and handstand walking. Uh, and then she won the Mary event last year uh, at the Games. And mind you, she didn't just beat all the females, she beat all of the males mm -hmm. with her score in Mary. So I'm going to put my money on Kari Pierce for that one. As far as who might struggle on this, I think all eyes are going to be on Laura Horvath because this is her big weakness. This is massive damage control mm -hmm. after that first event for her. And now it's, it's, can you finish this event, Laura? Can you not put yourself in a deeper hole? You know, this, the front squat's going to help get her out of the little hole that she put herself in with Fran. But like I was saying earlier, we're, we're not just talking about handstand push-ups where you can get a big kip. We're talking about strict. Mm -hmm. And when they're gone, they're gone. Yeah, on the men's side, Noah Olson got himself off to a good start. Unofficially sixth place overall. He is 11 points back of uh, Adler for that fifth and final spot. But still a lot needs to be determined here. But this is an event that looks good for him. Definitely. You know, he got seventh worldwide in, in 20.3. Again, deadlifts and handstand push-ups. He won Mary at the games last year. He was actually second place in the Fibonacci in 2018, which was handstand push-ups and kettlebell deadlifts. So I think this workout bodes really well for last year's second place finisher. Meanwhile, on the other side of this equation, when you think of handstand push-ups and people who have had difficulty with those, uh, it's Jacob Hepner. It'll be interesting to see how he handles this. Definitely, and I'm not saying that he's going to struggle, but I think eyes are on him to see how he does after he did struggle in 18.4. That kept him out of regionals and going to the games that year. So eyes are on him to see how he handles these handstand push-ups. We leave event three behind and then we move into event four. And to me, this is one of the most intriguing mm. tests. And once again, to use my Pat Sherwood lexicon, couldn't be simpler. We're just going to put you on a rower and you better you know, go ballistic on this thing. And, and that's really it. I think, you know, for these athletes, it's time to sell out. It's time mm -hmm. to go ragdoll and not leave any, anything um, left, any stone left to be unturned. And that's a real ugly place to be, if yeah. you ask me. Thank goodness, I, I think they all should be thanking uh, Dave Catra, Castro that this is the last event <laughs> yeah. of the day because to do anything after a 1K row, if you truly go all out, it's not going to happen. So when you think of athletes on the women's side who have the ability to sort of just row right into the pain cave and stay there for a while, oldest athlete in the field, but do not One count name. out Sam Briggs. Samantha the Engine Briggs, <laughs> right? I mean, she. this is, just like you said, a pure pain cave workout. That's where she likes to be. Um, there, At one time, she actually held a number of Masters lightweight rowing records. Um, her best 1K row was done in 2016, and it was a 323.6. If I think of an athlete that's just really willing to get ugly for the sake of making it <laughs> yeah. to the games, it is Samantha Briggs. It's hard to sometimes determine who would struggle on this, and a lot of, si a lot of times it just has to do with, with size. Mass moves mass. Who do you think might not do that well here in Event 4? For the females, I'm going to have to go with Christy Aramo O'Connell, mm -hmm. and that's just sheerly because she is a sm one of the smallest and one of the lightest athletes, and when it comes to something like a 1K row, mass moves mass. Yeah. So, although she is a fantastic
fantastic athlete. When you compare her to some of the other ladies in the field, she might struggle a bit. She'll do okay, but it's not going to be her best finish. Now, Brent Fikowski on the men's side, 35th overall right now. He is looking at this going, all right, finally, something that, that favors my body type. Let me at the rower, please. Right, and that's just it. it, it Brent has to take advantage of this event right mm -hmm. here. He's one of the tallest, one of the heaviest athletes. Like you said, you know, 27th in Fran, he did not him set himself up for a great position. So he really needs to go for it and, and use that rowing event to his advantage. This is, I'm going to ask the question for the sake of asking it, but I think we all know the answer. How does overall leader Matt Fraser do on a 1,000 meter row, given his ability to sort of put the blinders on and go into that pain cave? So I think, I, I think that compared to some of the taller, heavier mm -hmm. athletes, I don't know that he will win this event. Okay. I, I think that he will do something within the top five to 10 that will allow him to hold that first place position though. Yeah. We have watched one mother do very well today, and that is uh, Cara Saunders. We have another mother who we have watched do very well in the past, and that's Annie Thoros' daughter, and she is joining Nikki Brazer now live. Welcome to the show. How's it going? Thank you. It's going great. Thanks. It's so exciting it's to have crazy. you on. Going on. <laughs> oh, isn't it crazy? It's like it's like 2020 rolled around, and we figured out how to make it happen, and now we are right in the middle of it. Yes. Yes, I feel like I should be right in the middle of it too, but hey, here I am. <laughs> hey, well, here you are. I mean, you are a new mom. So just tell us a little bit about sort of what is going on with you right now in terms of balancing motherhood and CrossFit. Well, I'm getting back to it. I just had my baby girl uh, just over five weeks ago. And like my pregnancy was amazing, trained all the way through my pregnancy, but all of a sudden now I need to be a little bit patient, listen to my body, let it heal and recover properly. But I'm trying to get my heart rate back up again. And man, I know people out there, they're like, oh, just enjoy it, take it easy. I am enjoying it for sure. I am taking it easy, but it's better for everyone and it's so much better for me to, to let me <laughs> Let me get my heart rate up, let me breathe a little bit. It's just spiking right now, but man, it feels amazing to be moving again. And seeing seeing everyone now do these workouts, competing for the games, like I am getting so fired up for the next season. It's crazy. <laughs> that is so cool. It's so cool to hear. We can't wait to see you back out on the competition floor, of course. But right now we have we have another new mom and Cara Saunders is back on the floor for the first time since having her daughter and She's doing really, really well so far. What's your take on that? It's amazing. It's so cool. Obviously, there are certain people that you're rooting for and all of that, but and she's for sure one of those for me. Just like it's, it's such a good role model also for people like me, and I hope that I'm going to be that kind of role model for my daughter and other women getting back from it. Obviously happy with all that you've done and you could just step to the side and your career might like be on hold but it's very cool even though you have a kid it doesn't mean that you need to stop doing this you can get back to it and I think that that's important to show that you can do that if, if that is what you want and man it's amazing to see her uh, definitely rushing it out there definitely I could not agree more Annie thank you so much for popping in with us best of luck with your easing back into what I'm sure will be an incredible season to come. And for now, we're going to toss it back to Sean and our Annie. Thanks. All right, thank you, Nikki. It's going to be great to see Annie Thoros' daughter you know, get back in action, you know, and happy birthday to her. Look, she's, there's still clearly something left in that tank. I mean, she can, we see what happens with Cara Saunders. Why can Annie duplicate that? I think uh, mainly because Annie loves the sport mm -hmm. of CrossFit so much. She loves the sport. She loves competing. And uh, I truly think that that enjoyment of competing in the sport will, car will carry her mm -hmm. very far. Yeah. It means that this has never worked for her. This is pure enjoyment. Um, and I think she will only get better as a mom. Yeah, well, Annie Thoris' daughter before today was the career event wins leader at the CrossFit Games. She's now tied with Tia Toomey, and Matt Fraser is now tied for career event wins at the CrossFit Games with Rich Froning. Each of them now have 16.
16 event wins for the two of them. Uh, not we're bad. <laughs> not bad at all. We're going to continue to keep you updated uh, throughout the day on everything going on with the opening round of the CrossFit game. So here's how uh, you can watch. You're going to want to make sure that you uh, come back today at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time for our pre-show and then at 6 p.m. Pacific time we will have the results from events three and four and get you set up for the final day of competition. That day is on Saturday. We'll get things kicked off again at 11.30 a.m. And then uh, results from events five and six, that's at noon. And at 3 p.m. Pacific time, final results, and we will know who will wind, out, uh, wind up at the CrossFit Games. We do have the overall men's standings right now after two events as we get set to uh, enter that next window for events three and four. So let's take a look at those. We told you Matt Fraser is your overall leader. He has 188 total points. Baden Brown is in second. Griffin Raleigh, courtesy of that 490 pound monster front squat, is in third by eight points over Jeffrey Adler. Then Noah Olson right now hanging on to the fifth and the final spot, 12 points up on Scott Tetlow. Bjorgen Carl Gumanson still very much uh, within striking distance. We talked about Pat Vellner. 21st place right now with 71 points. So he's going to have some ground to make up as well. So we'll certainly keep an eye on that. I uh, want to thank everybody for joining us. We, again, will be back uh, around 5.30 Pacific time with the pre-show. So make sure you're right here uh, for all the results. For Nikki Brazier and Annie Sakamoto, <laughs> I'm Sean Woodland, and we'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching The Road to the Ranch.